Good morning, East Leiden, and welcome back to Eagle Update. My name is Dorothy, and today I'm here with Karina Mendron. The Eagle Update starts right, right now. Our first topic covers the Franklin Park Veterans Day Ceremony, which took place on November 11th. This segment is brought to you by Zoe, Emily, and Peter. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Veterans Day is important because it's a celebration to honor the American veterans for their patriotism, love for the United States, and the sacrifice of serving. After veterans serve, a lot of them feel that they should continue serving no longer for the country but for the community. A lot of first responders you encounter are veterans as well. Probably because it was a pretty easy transition because the fire service is almost actually like the military in terms of like a rank structure and things like that. So it just kind of just made sense. It was easy to do. I think the number one reason I wanted to become a firefighter is because I want to continue to serve and I want to go from serving my country to <clears throat> serving the community and just helping people. Veterans Day is an American holiday that honors all the women and men who have served honorably in the United States. I felt that actually serving my country was my duty, number one. Veterans Day is uh, special to me because it just gives the recognition of all of those men and women. I think Veterans Day is special to me because it remembers all the um, all the people that served and they want to be more than just your like average person. They want to do more with their life and help the country out somehow. You should stop and thank a veteran because they are doing a lot for our country, putting the citizens of the United States before themselves, and most importantly, supporting them back to their civilian life. It says, do you want to make a difference in the community? Well, the Fashion Club has a great service opportunity that Sophia Gabs and Mia will be talking about right now. <gasps> oh The inspiration behind the blanket making came from the fact that a lot of migrant families are currently living in outdoor conditions like in Chicago. There are migrant families living outside of police stations and locally there are migrant families living in the bus station at O'Hare which is not temperature controlled. So we thought our fashion club could easily come together. We know how to work fabric, we know how to use patterns, so we're creating tie blankets that we can donate to those families as it gets colder. Recently, the Chicago O'Hare Airport has been getting flooded with hundreds of migrants, including children. Some of these migrants have been staying at the airline's facility for days, and others for weeks. They are curling up on the seats outside, uh, inside of arrivals. Um, there's actually Terminal 2, there is mattresses put out for them. So during around 7 o'clock to 8, they have mattresses, blankets, uh, pillows all set up for them and they just lay there, um, eat, and like just use the space to live, honestly. According to the Fox 32 Chicago website, these families have been constantly stuck to the thought of what shelter they are going to be placed to, health matters, and safety matters. I've had a little girl come up to me and ask me if I had any food on me, and I, I did. I bought her a, Mc, a McChicken. <laughs> Well, not McChicken, um, a chicken sandwich from McDonald's. Um, she asked me for that, and I was so sad. <laughs> it was over summer, and I just felt horrible. And then I gave her $5, because that, that's how much I made in tips that day. So I tried to give her as much as I could. My personal thoughts on the migrant crisis locally and just at the level, at the federal level too, I'm, I'm devastated. Being a mom, I can't imagine having to care for my child in the conditions that a lot of these families are forced to care for their families in in the best way that they can. So I'm heartbroken that our government isn't able to support them. Um, I'm heartbroken that they were having to need to leave their original countries in the first place because those living conditions weren't great. Um, so I, my hope for them is that they're able to get the services that they need. They're able to move into either a, a shelter or an apartment um, and begin to make money for themselves and support their families. 
Our next topic is our light and basketball team and the upcoming Thanksgiving tournament brought to you by Alex, Sal, and Owen. The light and basketball team this year is looking to be full of promise and potential. The team is giving back to the communities through multiple ways this season. Here's Mr. Heisler, the line head basketball coach, bringing you some thoughts on this year's season, such as the Thanksgiving tournament, thoughts on our strong senior core, and Lions Crush Cancer event. Opening at Ridgewood at the Battle of the Ridge, uh, it's a great opportunity for us to attack that first goal of winning a tournament. Uh, it's a really good measuring stick for us to see where we're at starting the year, um, and that's, that's what our goal is. We're going to try to go over there and, uh, and try to win it. But I just want to see growth. I want us to see be better you know, in February than we are in November, and I want it to be a continual process. Uh, I want the kids to make some memories and have some fun, and I definitely want to uh, win some games. That's, that's, that's why we play. We have a really strong senior core that I think is ready to step in and play a ton of minutes. A senior nucleus is really strong and ready to step up their role this year. And it's just a really fun, enjoyable part. You get to connect a little deeper with the kids. You get to compete and stay around a game that I truly love. And so, you know, that's why I really enjoy being the coach here at Leiden High School. We're going to do a Crush Cancer event this year uh, to raise some money. Uh, we're going to find somebody in our community. We've done this. We did it every year up until COVID, and then we've done it uh, in a minimal piece, but we're gonna try to get it all the way back this year where we have a huge fundraiser uh, and donate to a family within our community that's battling cancer. There's more to the team than just the coach. Besides being out in the court and giving it their all, we got more insight on the players and asked them who or what motivates them to play basketball. We had also asked the team what advice they would give to the underclassmen on junior varsity. LeBron, when I was younger, I was watching him, and then he's been like my true like inspiration into the sport. So I play. I would probably say LeBron James is my true inspiration. Jordan, LeBron, Kobe. I've been looking at all their clips and stuff. So yeah. Uh, my uncle was before he passed away. Uh, I, he loved the sport, so that made me love it more. Keep going at it. Just keep practicing. Keep grinding. I mean, that's all it really is. You just keep just keep putting the work in, and then you'll see the results come in. He's, um. These years go by fast and stuff, so I've been working since my freshman year, so I've been, it's been fast as heck and everything, so keep working, keep working. The start of the Thanksgiving tournament is coming up on Monday, November 21st, and the first home game is on the 28th. Hopefully you come to show support. This is Alex Pahina for the Eagle Update. And now we have a quick commercial break brought to you by Dorothy. Hello. Bella and Gabs. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, hello, my name is Dorothy and today I'm your host for Meet the Team. And today we're gonna introduce you guys to the people behind the camera. Come on, let's go see who they are. Also, this is our studio, whatever you want to call it, office, so it might be a little hectic, but just enjoy. Hey, can you interview real quick? Yeah, perfect, come with me. So, hi, hello, what's your name? Zoe Palma. Hey, Zozo, can you tell us a little bit about your segment this week? Um, I'm doing the Franklin Park Veterans Day ceremony. Is there anything that you would like to tell us about yourself that you think the people need to know? Um, I've been playing softball for 14 years. Dope. Who do you think would win, me or you? Me. I don't know about that one. Here with? Oh, and me here. So, can you tell us about your segment this week? We're doing a segment about the basketball team. Uh, we're just interviewing about the Thanksgiving tournament and uh, just like getting to know like the students on like on the team. Do you think there's anything that the people should know about you? Uh, I'm the chance to rapper at uh, what is it at Connie's. Damn, that's dope. And today I'm here with Layana, Mia. Can you tell me what your segment's about this week? This week, we're doing the segment on bloopers. Our last one was kind of a hit, so we're doing it again. All right, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? All we do is chase that back. <laughs> Money come first. Don't play about that. <laughs> that, was, that was it. Like, that was it. <laughs> Let's see who else we have to interview now. Come on. Hey, do you want to ask you a few questions real quick? Sure. Perfect, call me. I'm in the hover right here. So, today I'm here with? Karina Mendron. This week I'm anchoring with Dorothy. That's me. We're just the bosses, that's it. We just do this, for real. <laughs> Anyways, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, I played volleyball for pretty much my whole life, and now I've been going to the gym and running a lot. Baller. And I'm back with? Sophia. Hi, Sophia. Can you tell us what your segment is about this week? Yeah, so I'm a producer for the Fashion Club Blanket Making segment. Do you think there's anything that people should know about you? That I love dill pickles the baby dill pickles the best pickles out there i hate pickles and thanks for tuning in for our commercial break hopefully you get to meet the rest of the team soon thank you so much goodbye Bye. and for our last topic is a thanksgiving trivia brought to you by owen ethan Saveda, and ayana 
<laughs> Hello, Eagles, and welcome back. Today, we brought to you a very special segment on Thanksgiving trivia coming to you from Ethan Ayana and Saveda. What day does Thanksgiving fall on? The 23rd. November 23rd. <laughs> a Thursday. Oh, this is a hard one, you burnt. Uh, oh, this is a hard I mean, one. it's obviously the... <laughs> <laughs> it's obviously the 23rd, obviously. <laughs> it's like the like almost obvious answer. <laughs> what do you call a group of turkeys? Turkeys. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't even know. Gay no? Hey, that right? <laughs> Flock. <laughs> a flocker! Flock! 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 That's the answer. What president made Thanksgiving a holiday? Lincoln, Obama, or Washington? Washington. Wrong. <laughs> Abraham Lincoln, Obama, or Washington? Washington, oh, for sure. Washington. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong! Question is, what is a baby turkey called? Um. <laughs> Come on, you read it. It's a gobble, obviously. A gobble. A gobble. <laughs> Final answer, lock it in. A baby turkey. No. Oh. <laughs> nah. <laughs> <laughs> gobble, gobble. A gobble? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Okay, there we go. Gobble, gobble. Mm-hmm. And for... Call! <laughs> what president was the first to pardon a turkey? Christopher Columbus. <laughs> <laughs> what? That's all we have for today, Eagles. I hope you enjoyed that, and we hope to see you soon on the Eagle Update. This is Silveta Lamone signing off. That's all the news we have time for today, East Leiden. We hope you enjoy it, and make sure to check your email for the bulletin board about meetings, clubs, and tryouts, and other events at school. If you have any ideas for future segments, send an email to Mr. Rossi. I'm Karina Medron. And I'm Dorothy Castillo. And we're, we're signing, signing off, off now! <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs>